Hi students, welcome to the notes on stoichiometry, also known as mole ratios. Remind you that this is a video. You can always pause it if you feel things are going too fast and you need a moment to write or rewind it if you need to go back and review a concept again. Let's get started. Here's the essential question. Consider writing this at the top of your page. How do we use mole ratios as conversion factors? So what is stoichiometry? Stoichiometry is a method to calculate the relative quantities between reactants and products in a chemical reaction. In chemistry, this is an extremely important and useful concept because we can take a recipe or a chemical reaction like you see here uh, where we're making a s'more and we can scale it. And so here's a general s'mores equation, right? We got two cracker squares, one marshmallow, one chocolate square, and those things make a s'more. Now we can change this up. What if we wanted to scale it up or scale it down? Soikiometry helps us make those comparisons using the base recipe. So first we need to know what a mole ratio is. A mole ratio is the ratio between reactants and other reactants or our products. And we know what the mole ratios are because we use the coefficients in a molecular equation. So up here is our molecular equation again. And if you look at the front numbers, it's two to one to one to one. Those are the ratios between the reactants, other reactants, or the ratios between the reactants and the products. They help us answer questions like, what if I had four moles of graham crackers and I had plenty of all the other materials? How many s'mores would I get? Could you answer this question? I've got a big warning for most, for all of you. You have to know how to write and balance molecular equations. We've been doing this a ton since Chem 1. And if you're still struggling with this, I would do anything you can to get support and help. Seek one of the teachers at, at, at the school. Uh, go and try to find extra practice problems. Go online and look at YouTube videos. But make sure you know how to write and balance molecular equations. For example, take a look at this equation down here. Do you know how to find the products of this equation? And do you know how to balance those coefficients? I recommend right now you try pausing this video and seeing if you can do that by yourself for good practice. Did you pause the video? I hope so. I hope you tried it out. If so, the answer is at the upper right hand corner of this slide. And so here we have a two to one to one to two coefficients in this chemical reaction. So bringing back to this chemical reaction and talking about stoichiometry again, these molar ratios let us know the haves, the needs, and the gets. They help us compare reactants to reactants, they help us compare reactants to products, and they help us compare two products or more. So for example, let's talk about the haves and the needs. What if we had four moles of potassium hydroxide? How many moles of sulfuric acid would you need in order to complete this reaction and use all those moles? Well, knowing the molar ratio, we know that it's a two mole potassium hydroxide to one mole sulfuric acid ratio, then it makes it quite easy. It's just two, two moles of H2SO4. Sorry, my H2SO4 is a little schemwampus right there. Um, what about the haves and the gets? What if we had potassium hydroxide and we wanted to know how much water we needed to get? Specifically, what if we had 1.5 moles of potassium hydroxide and we wanted to know how much water we were going to get? Well, we know that this is a two to two ratio. You could also consider that a one to one ratio at lowest, at the lowest modifier. So therefore, they're the same. It's 1.5 moles of water. If I start off with 1.5 moles of potassium hydroxide, I'm going to get 1.5 moles of water. How about the gets and the gets? Well, what if we knew we got 20 moles of uh, potassium sulfate? How many moles of water are we also gonna get? Well, we know that this is a one to two ratio between the two. So therefore, if we got 20 moles of potassium sulfate, we're going to get 40 moles of water. So mole ratios can be used as conversion factors. Now those examples that I gave you before were relatively easy because we're using whole numbers and they're quite simple to use. But what if we had a number that's more realistic and that's a little bit harder? What if we had a decimal? For example, let's look at this example problem here. What if we had 1.3 moles of potassium hydroxide? How many moles of sulfuric acid are we gonna get from that? Now this isn't as easy as the last problems because it's hard to do ratios with 1.3. So 
we need to know how to actually turn this into a math equation to figure that out. So let's do that. We're going to start with 1.3 moles of potassium hydroxide. And so we need to take this number and we need to change it. We need to convert it into sulfuric acid. To do that, we need to know what the conversion factor is. And we're going to rely on the mole ratio for that because mole ratios are conversion factors. They're the lowest quantifiable comparison between the two. And so we know that it's two potassium hydroxide for one sulfuric acid. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 1.3 moles of potassium hydroxide and we're going to multiply it by a fraction. Now we're always going to watch our units. We want to make sure that we cancel out moles of potassium hydroxide. And so moles of potassium hydroxide for our conversion factor need to go on the bottom and moles of sulfuric acid need to go on the top. And so we're going to multiply this by that one to two ratio and we're gonna get our answer. So that's our conversion factor. Our answer is 0.65 moles of sulfuric acid. So if you recall what we talked about conversion factors before, we've done this pattern before when we talked about mole ratios or when we talked about um, Avogadro's number and converting between grams and moles. But here's kind of the, the generalized form of using a conversion factor. We always take our starting unit measure or starting measurement of unit A. That's what's given to us in the problem. And in order to convert it to unit B, we're going to multiply it by that conversion factor, making sure that we put the ratio or the conversion of the from unit. So if we're going from unit A, we want to put it on the bottom. And if we're going to unit B, we want to put it on the top. And then we're going to end up with our converted measure. I'm going to give you one more warning. Write all your numbers, your units, and your molecules. Many of you guys are going to be so frustrated by me for this, for ragging on you all the time about it, but because it's tedious, and I know it's tedious. We're not just writing numbers. We need to write the units and the molecules as well. I promise you it will be helpful. Don't cut corners. Units help us out. In science, units are super important because they account for where we're going and what we're doing, and they let us know if we've made a mistake. There's so many times I walk up to a student and I say, hey, can I, can I help you? You seem to be really struggling, and students are just so frustrated, and they show me their work, and I can't even help them. I can't help them because I don't know where their numbers are coming from and what they're doing with these numbers. But if you write units, we can tell. We know what's going on, and we can figure out things a lot easier. So don't cut corners. So go ahead and try that right now. Here's a student practice. We have a molecular equation up here in the upper right hand corner. The question is, is how many moles of oxygen would you need in order to react 1.5 moles of ammonia? And so pause this video right now and see if you can figure out this problem yourself using mole ratios. Okay, did you pause the video? Please do so because it's really important to help your brain work and function to be able to try to do it by yourself. Even if you make mistakes, let's go ahead and check those mistakes. All right, so the question is, I have ammonia. So here's our ammonia, and I specifically have 1.5 moles of ammonia. And we want to know how, many, how much oxygen we would need in order to react all of that ammonia. And so we got to make a comparison. It's an ammonia to oxygen comparison. So we know based on the coefficients in the chemical reaction that if we had four moles of ammonia, then it would take five moles of oxygen. So we're going to need to use that ratio. And so using that ratio, if we had 1.5 moles of ammonia, how much oxygen would that be in order to, how much oxygen would we need in order to make that equivocal comparison? So we're going to take what we have. We have 1.5 moles of ammonia, and we're going to multiply that number by our ratio, by our conversion factor. So thinking about which goes on top and bottom, we want to go away from ammonia. We want to cancel out the moles of ammonia. So we need to make sure to put that 4 on the bottom, and we want to go to oxygen. So that's a 5 to 4 ratio or a 4 to 5 ratio. We're making sure to put the 5 on top and the 4 on the bottom because that is how we cancel units out. And so our answer is going to be 1.9 moles of oxygen if we follow this through. So we're going to take 1.5, we're going to multiply it by 5 fourths. Or you could take 1.5, times it by 5, and then divide it by 4. Whatever works best for you on a calculator. I hope you got this answer. I hope this was relatively easy. Good luck on the practice, guys.